Electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video. Today's video is going to be talking about installing this solar inverter. So the Solus 3.6 S6 series solar inverter. I want to talk to you about how to actually install it, the installation process, but not as a professional. I'm not an electrician, I'm not a solar installer. I don't know all the technicalities and the regulations for installing these things. What I want to do is demystify it for those people that are thinking about solar or have just got it but want to understand it a little bit more. So I want to provide that interpretation from the middle between a customer's view and an installer's view and hopefully demystify, simplify so you can understand how easy it is to install these inverters because they are quite simple really. What is a solar inverter? It converts DC power to AC power. That's basically what it does. We need that because the solar panels produce DC power and our house uses AC power. So we need one of these to convert the power from DC to AC. So quite simply, we're going to need some DC power cables and we're going to need some AC power cables. The DC power comes in and the AC power goes out. That's really what it is. It's quite simple. So let's start with the DC power that comes in from the solar panels. If the solar panels are on my garage roof, uh, they're nice and close to the inverter. You can run the normal flexible solar cables with MC4 connectors on the end. They're push fit, they click in, they're nice and easy to install. But anyway, the flexible cable can come from the roof straight down the wall and plug into the solar inverter. It's that simple. My solar panels are in the garden further away, about 30, 40 meters away. So what we have to do is use that flexible um, cable off the solar panels with the MC4 connectors. It goes into a DC isolator and that DC isolator then has another cable that connects to it that goes underground, an armored cable to make sure it's more protected and waterproof and can't be damaged if you go into it with a spade, all, all those sort of things. So that thick, um, more robust cable goes underground. That comes round the corner of my garden, into the garage here, gets terminated somewhere around here, and then converted back again into these smaller, more flexible um, cables with MC4 connectors on the end, and then plugs in there. So if your solar panels are close, they can be wired directly. If they're further away, you need a cable in between. And then there are some standards to meet as to where the DC isolators have to be either end. So the installer does all of that. The installation process of putting this on the wall was just a couple of screws. The installation process of putting those DC cables in was just literally push and click. So the installation of the solar inverter is very, very easy. The thing that took most of the time is running the cables neatly and tacking them on and digging them underground and putting the extra isolators in, doing those extra little bits of the things that take the time. So anyway, we've now got DC power coming in on these MC4 connectors and uh, they're connected to our solar panels. Obviously, while we're working on that, it's isolated so there's no power coming through. Then we have to install the AC connection. So let me turn around. The AC, oh, the AC connection is over there on the far corner. That cable comes into this trunking and goes along the trunking to where we have um, a separate consumer unit with a circuit breaker in it. So just like your home uh, consumer unit, we have circuit breakers for your cooker, for your lights, for your sockets upstairs and downstairs, all of those sort of things. You need a separate circuit breaker to connect one of these. That's the regulation. So no, it's not a three pin plug <laughs> that you plug into the wall to power this. It's powered via that same AC cable that connects to the circuit breaker in your consumer unit somewhere. And if you don't have space in your consumer unit, you get an expansion box, uh, a separate consumer unit where these circuit breakers can go like this one so we have a, a separate one there we didn't have space for the meter that has to go in as well so we needed a separate box to be able to put the meter in so these meters what are they required for well i actually don't want it and i don't need it i don't need to know how many kilowatt hours are being generated and i don't need to know all of the data about the inverter and the ac connection i don't need that because it's on the inverter itself, I can see it, and it's going to be on the Solus Cloud app that I'm going to use, so I have it already. But the meter is required because it's part of the MCS standard. So if you're using an installer that adheres to the MCS standard, which is supposed to be a higher level of standard for installs, then you get an extra meter. You have to have it. So yeah, I've had to find some extra space in one of the consumer units to put that meter. So you have a circuit breaker, a meter, a physical wire connects the two and provides power to power this on. And one of the weird things about that is because the power coming into this unit is the same AC connection as the power going out, occasionally when you've got no solar and solar's gone, you'll see negative 
power generation from the inverter. And that's because the inverter is using some power. So the power isn't going out to the grid, it's coming in from the grid to power the inverter. And that's why you see negative solar generation occasionally. So with that done, we've got AC power powering it and we've got the ability to put power out to the grid because it goes to my house. And if I consume it in the house, it gets consumed. If I don't consume it in the house, it goes straight back out of the grid. Off-grid configurations are obviously different because that energy doesn't flow from my house straight out to the grid. If there's no grid connection, there's nowhere for it to go. So it's very different in an off-grid situation. DC power and AC power, we're basically done. But I've got two extra things to talk to you about the installation of this inverter, and that's optional items. So over on this end here, we have a, an RS-485 cable. That's just a standard of communications cable. That RS-485 cable goes in the trunking again, up to another uh, consumer unit type box where it's protected. And there's a meter, a solace meter in this. So I've got another meter. I've got one monitoring AC power um, here coming from this, but I've got another one for AC power because I want to monitor the grid. So instead of monitoring what's coming out of this inverter and just this inverter, we've got a meter further down the line that connects to a CT cable, which monitors the power from the grid connection. And it's monitoring after all of these inverters, after all of the house, much, much closer to where the main incoming meter is from the grid. So it's seeing everything that's coming in or everything that's going out to the grid, excluding everything that's happening inside of the house. The reason why we want to do that is so that this inverter can see how much we're exporting to the grid. And if we go over the limit that we set in this inverter, then it can ramp down the power that's being inverted from this inverter. So this one inverter, which is the fourth one I've now installed, is the one at the end that might take us over the limit that we've got installed with the DNO, with the, uh, with the grid. So if we go over that, then that inverter will ramp down and make sure we comply with the export limit that we have. But it needs that CT clip and it needs the extra meter to be able to see it. So that's what that RS-485 cable's for. So again, another bit for the installer to do, isn't it? To run the RS-485 cable, to set the parameters up in the inverter, install the meter and install the CT clip. It's all meat and potato stuff really for an installer. It's not complicated stuff and doesn't take long. We're talking about a few hours work here, but it's all the little extras that all add up. The last thing to install is something that I'll probably install myself. Um, it depends when and where I get hold of the dongle. So on, the inverters here, you might see the dongle here with a little red light on it. That's the network connection to my broadband internet connection. So the inverter is then online. So the data that's stored inside the inverter, the data that's there about voltage, temperature, kilowatt hours generated, power being generated right now, all of that information can be sent down the internet to the Solus servers. And then I can use the Solus Cloud app to see all of that data. So I need an internet connection, and that's what I need one of those dongles for. That your installer should be doing as well, but for this install, they hadn't actually shipped that dongle in time, so when the installer was here, getting it all connected and getting it all working, that didn't get installed. So I might end up doing that myself, and that I don't mind. It's, it's not that difficult at all. It just screws in under the bottom and uh, provides you with an internet connection to the inverter. You log on to that and basically set it to use your home broadband connection, just like you do with loads of other devices where it asks you for what your network connection is and what your network password is. You set that up and then basically the inverter is connected to your home broadband network. It's really not difficult at all. The Solus Cloud app adds another inverter. It recognizes the inverter serial number and also the dongle ties the two together, and uh, then you can start to see all of your data. So I hope that makes sense, and I hope I haven't made any mistakes in that, or not too many anyway. Uh, but these, these inverters are really quite simple to install. There's a DC set of cables to connect in, an AC cable to connect in, wire in to provide some power to it, to have the uh, energy flowing out. It all needs to be done to meet regulations for safety purposes. And then you've got the optional extras of connecting it to the internet and connecting a meter to monitor what's happening with the grid and do export management as well with the inverters. 
Anyway, take care. Thank you so much for watching these videos. More videos to come, including videos about um, this solar inverter and the solar panels that I've got connected to it, how much we're generating and how much how that compares to the other solar arrays I've installed and was it good value putting the ground mounted array in. One of the other videos I want to do, um, while the installer was installing the uh, MC4 connections out with the solar panels, I videoed him actually crimping the connectors on and how it is done and all the special equipment he was using and he was explaining to me what he was doing. I found that interesting. Bit nerdy perhaps, but very, very interesting to see how these MC4 cables are actually made. So I'm going to put out a video of that coming soon as well. Take care, see you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.